Hi there, I'm John McAdams, founder of the Big Game Hunting blog. And in this video, I'm going to do a detailed comparison of the 270 Winchester, the 280 Remington, the 280 Ackley Improved, and the 7mm Remington Magnum cartridges. Now, most hunters and shooters in North America are probably familiar with the 270 and the 7mm Rim Mag cartridges. However, while those two rounds are very popular for a reason, they are far from the only high quality choices in that size range. Indeed, the 280 Ackley Improved is one of the newest SAMI standardized rifle cartridges on the block, and the 280 AI was developed by modifying the case from the 280 Remington. Now, both of those cartridges are capable performers, though neither is as well known or as widely used as the 270 or the 7mm Remington Magnum. So in this episode, I'm going to do a detailed comparison of the 270, the 280 Ackley Improved, the 280, and the 7mm Remington Magnum in an effort to parse out the differences between those cartridges so you can make an informed decision which one will work best for you. As usual, we'll start with the history of these cartridges. Now, as is the case with many other cartridges developed in the United States, the story of the 270, the 280 Ackley Improved, the 280, and the 7mm Remington Magnum really starts with the 30 6 Now, the U.S. Army started looking for a new service rifle and cartridge after being on the receiving end of a very deadly demonstration of the capabilities of the revolutionary new Mauser rifle and 7mm Mauser cartridge in the hands of Spanish troops in Cuba during 1898. They eventually chose the bolt-action 1903 Springfield rifle chambered in the new 30-06 Springfield cartridge as their new service rifle and cartridge. The 30-06 was a massive leap forward in performance compared to other popular American cartridges used during that era, like the 4570. So for this reason, the 30-06 Springfield was an almost instant success in the civilian market. Now, as is the case with many other well-designed cartridges, like the 7mm Mauser and the 3030, Wildcatters also quickly started modifying the 30-06 to accomplish a variety of different tasks. Some gun designers necked up the 30-06 to develop bigger cartridges like the 338-06 and the 35 Whalen. Others opted to neck down the 30-06 case to use smaller diameter bullets like the 25-06 Remington. Now that is what the folks at Winchester did when they modified the case to use .277 caliber instead of .308 caliber bullets. The result was the 270 Winchester cartridge, which they released in 1925 with the Winchester Model 54 rifle. Now the original 270 Winchester load shot a 130 grain bullet at a velocity of 3,140 feet per second. That was an incredibly high velocity for the 1920s, and it was a tremendous speed improvement over the 30-06, which was itself considered a very high velocity cartridge for the day. While the 270 had a very fast muzzle velocity compared to other popular cartridges of the day, it was not an immediate commercial success. Now this was due to a number of reasons, one of which was the fact that the 270 fired unusual size bullets. Instead of the much more commonly used .284 caliber or 7mm bullets like the 7mm Mauser and many newer cartridges like the 7mm 08, for reasons that aren't clear today, the 270 Winchester uses .277 caliber bullets. Now this very likely hampered adoption of the cartridge to a certain degree. However, the 270 Winchester did receive a pretty significant assist from Jack O'Connor in the famous articles he wrote for Outdoor Life about the 270 Winchester over the years. Some were reluctant to adopt the cartridge, but many American hunters really did come to appreciate the flat shooting characteristics of the round, as well as the fact that it was so effective on thin-skinned game. It did not take very long before the 270 Winchester was firmly entrenched as one of the most popular hunting cartridges used in the United States. Now, Remington made an attempt at knocking the 270 Winchester off its perch when they rolled out the 280 Remington cartridge in 1957. Developed by necking down a 30 6 case, the 280 Remington offered hunters a slight ballistic advantage over the 270, and it also utilized the more popular .284 caliber bullets. All things considered, the 280 Remington had a lot of potential and should have been a big success, but the company made a couple of major blunders when they rolled out the new cartridge. First, they introduced the 280 Remington in their Model 740 autoloader. Later, they also offered it in their Model 742 autoloader and Model 760 slide action, before finally offering it in the Model 721 and 725 bolt-action rifles. 
They did eventually get around to offering it in their legendary Model 700 bolt action, but they dropped it after a couple of years before finally reintroducing it in the Model 700 in 1979. Now, during many of those critical early years, the cartridge was only available in the Model 742 autoloader. While pump action and autoloading rifles are great for certain hunting situations, the extremely restricted availability of the 280 Remington for many years, especially its unavailability in any bolt action rifles at first, was a major factor that kept it from achieving more widespread acceptance among hunters. Now, the introduction of the massively successful 7mm Remington Magnum in 1962 also derailed any prospects of the 280 Remington catching on to any large degree with the general hunting public. As you'll see in a minute though, Remington did not give up on the 280. Now, Remington did make a massive splash in 1962 when they rolled out their new Remington Model 700 rifle along with the brand new 7mm Remington Magnum cartridge. Using a shortened 375 H&H Magnum case, neck down to use a .284 caliber bullet, the 7mm Remington Magnum offered a significant ballistic improvement over the 30 6 Springfield, the 270, the 280 Remington, and almost any other cartridge widely available in North America at the time that would fit in a standard or a long action rifle. Now, since it uses a larger diameter case derived from the 375 H&H, the 7mm Magnum has a very large powder capacity and it is capable of shooting the same weight bullet faster than the 30 6 Additionally, those smaller diameter .284 caliber bullets used by the 7mm Rim Mag have a higher ballistic coefficient and more sectional density than 30 caliber bullets of the same weight used by the 30 6 for those reasons, most 7mm Remington Magnum loads have more energy remaining downrange, a flatter trajectory, and all other things being equal, will penetrate better than 30 6 Springfield loads using the same weight bullets. And to top it all off, while a few older cartridges like the 300 H&H Magnum offered many of those same performance benefits, the new 7mm Remington Magnum was unique because it could fit in a standard linked action rifle just like the 30-06 and similar cartridges like the 270, the 280, etc. While those bigger cartridges like the 300 H&H required a longer magnum linked rifle action. It's also easy to see why the 7mm Remington Magnum quickly pushed the 280 Remington even farther out of the limelight at first. However, the management at Remington gave the 280 Remington another shot and reintroduced it in 1979 as the 7mm Express Remington in a bid to piggyback off the popularity of the 7mm Remington Magnum. Though dimensionally identical to, and thus completely interchangeable with, the original 280 Remington, Remington claimed that the new 7mm Express loads had a tiny velocity advantage over the original 280 Remington factory loads when using the same weight bullet. As you can imagine though, the name change resulted in a, a lot of confusion between the 7mm Express and the 7mm Remington Magnum, which are not interchangeable. So Remington renamed the cartridge again after a few years and went back to the 280 Remington, which it is still called today. So if it weren't bad enough that the management at Remington didn't fully get behind the cartridge and offer it in a bolt action rifle from the start, they also kept changing its name. Now, it doesn't matter how great a cartridge may be, but that sort of sequence of events is a surefire recipe for a big commercial flop, and that is exactly what happened to the 280 Remington. Now, most rounds would have just faded into obscurity forever after suffering a failure similar to what happened initially with the 280. However, the fact that it is still hanging around even after experiencing a bunch of marketing fumbles from corporate management is a testament to the inherent strengths of the 280 Remington. In fact, though it's nowhere near as popular as the 270 or the 7mm Magnum, the 280 Remington is still in somewhat common use today. Now, interestingly enough, the 280 Remington is the parent for another excellent cartridge that is not only gaining more widespread recognition itself, but is also helping to enhance the reputation of its parent, the 280 Ackley Improved. Parker Auto Ackley better known as P.O. Ackley, was very well known for developing Wildcat cartridges in the latter half of the 20th century. Among other things, he is particularly well known for his series of Ackley Improved cartridges. Now, Ackley Improved cartridges are essentially a traditional round, like a 270, 30-30, 30-06, 30 etc., that uses a blown-out case to reduce taper in the sidewall and increase the shoulder angle. 
The result is a new case with a slightly more, maybe 4 to 5% more, powder capacity. Since they can hold more powder, Ackley improved cartridges are capable of higher velocities than their parent cartridge when loaded with the same weight bullet. However, the reduced body taper and sharper shoulder can sometimes cause feeding issues with certain rifles. Now, the actual performance between Ackley improved cartridges and their parents does vary, with some realizing a much bigger jump in velocity than others. So, for example, when using the same weight bullet, 280 Ackley improved factory ammunition typically shoots, say, 50 to 150, usually around 100 feet per second faster than most 280 Remington factory ammo. Now, that might not seem like much, but the 280 Ackley Improved does hit something of a sweet spot between the 280 Remington and the 7mm Remington Magnum. So, not only does the 280 Ackley Improved offer a noticeable ballistic advantage over the 280, but it is also capable of performance nearly on par with the 7mm Remington Magnum. Now, additionally, since it has such an efficient design, the 280 AI doesn't use as much powder as the 7mm Magnum to achieve nearly the same level of performance. So, for this reason, the 280 AI can nearly duplicate the performance of the 7mm Rim Mag with a little bit less recoil, all other things being equal. So, that is why management at Nosler decided to standardize the 280 Ackley Improved and submit it to SAMI for approval, which it received in 2008. Now, let's talk about the relative cartridge sizes of these four cartridges. Now, the unique roots of the 7mm Remington Magnum and the shared heritage of the 270, the 280, and the 280 Ackley are all obvious. So first, the 270, the 280, and the 280 Ackley Improved are all very similar in appearance. They have the same rim diameter as well as very similar case lengths. However, there are some important differences that set them apart from each other. The 280 Remington and the 270 Winchester are identical up to the shoulder and they have the same 17.5 degree shoulder angle, but the shoulder of the 280 Remington is moved slightly forward and this prevents 280 Remington ammo from being chambered and fired in a 270 Winchester chamber. Now, the shoulder of the 280 Ackley is moved even farther forward, and the shoulder angle is increased from 17.5 to 40 degrees. The 280 Ackley also has a less tapered case than the 280 and the 270 Winchester. Now, with a completely different lineage from the other three cartridges, the 7mm Remington Magnum also has a unique look. And not only is it a belted Magnum cartridge, but it also has a larger rim diameter and a 25 degree shoulder. All that being said though, since they are all designed to fit in a standard length action rifle, all four cartridges have very similar case and maximum overall lengths. So not surprisingly, the 270 Winchester and 280 Remington have very similar case capacities, while the 280 Ackley can hold a little more powder because of its less tapered case and steeper 40 degree shoulder. Even so, the 7mm Remington Magnum can hold significantly more powder than the other three, which is due in large part to its larger diameter case. Now, additionally, the 280 Remington has the lowest maximum SAMI pressure of the bunch at 60,000 psi. The 7mm Remington Magnum is next at 61,000, and it is followed by the 270 Winchester and the 280 Ackley, which both have a maximum SAMI pressure of 65,000 psi. Finally, bullet size is the other big distinguishing factor between them. The 270 uses .277 caliber bullets, while the 280 Remington, 280 Ackley, and 7mm Remington Magnum all use .284 caliber bullets. Now, those differences in the external dimensions of the four cartridges do translate into differences in ballistic performance, though probably not quite as much as you would initially expect. Now, this is illustrated when you compare Nosler Trophy Grade and Hornady Precision Hunter factory ammunition loaded with 130 grain Acubon with a .435 BC and 145 grain ELDX with a .536 BC bullets in 270 Winchester, 140 grain Acubon with a .485 BC, and 150 grain ELDX bullets with a .574 BC bullets in 280 Remington. 140 grain Acubond and 162 grain ELDX with a .631 BC bullets in 280 Ackley Improved and 140 grain Acubond and 162 grain ELDX bullets in 7mm Remington Magnum. Now all eight loads use a 200 yard zero. Now interestingly, the 130 grain 270 load has an almost identical trajectory to the 280 Remington 140 grain Acubond load. 
The same goes for the 145 grain 270 Winchester versus the 150 grain 280 Remington load. In both cases, the 270 Winchester has a slightly flatter trajectory, but the 280 Remington has a tiny bit more kinetic energy at all ranges, like 5 to 10% more at 500 yards. Now the three 7mm 140 grain Nossler loads all use the exact same Acubon bullet, just fired at different velocities. The 7mm Magnum is 50 feet per second faster than the 280 Ackley, which is in turn about 150 feet per second faster than the 280 Remington. With that in mind, the minor differences in trajectory and retain energy between the three are not at all surprising. The results are also about what you'd probably expect for the Hornady Precision Hunter loads for those cartridges. Now that being said, the 280 Ackley is a little closer in performance to the 7mm Rim Mag than it is to the 280 Remington. This is also evident when you compare how much a 10 mile an hour crosswind impacts those same 270 Winchester, 280 Remington, 280 Ackley, and 7mm Rim Mag loads out to 500 yards. Now even though they have a very similar trajectory, with both light and heavy for caliber bullets, the 280 Remington does have an advantage over the 270 in terms of wind drift. Now once again, the 7mm Remington Magnum does have the least wind drift, and it is followed closely by the 280 Ackley Improved, and there is a slightly larger gap between the 280 Ackley and the 280 Remington. Alright, now let's talk about recoil. And to do this comparison, I used Nosler's own reloading data published online. I'm not aware of any rifles currently manufactured in all four cartridges, so in the interest of making as close to an apples to apples comparison as possible, I just decided to make the comparison with a hypothetical rifle that weighs seven and a half pounds for each cartridge. So with that in mind, the 270 has the least recoil of the bunch with recoil progressively increasing with the 280, the 280 Ackley improved and the seven millimeter Remington Magnum. Now this is one of the most interesting points of comparison between the seven millimeter Magnum and the 280 Ackley. That particular 7mm mag load has a little bit more free recoil energy than the 280 Ackley when using the same weight rifle, but it is shooting the same bullet only 50 feet per second faster. This is because it takes an additional 3.5 grains of powder to produce that additional 50 feet per second of velocity. So in this case, it takes about 6% more powder to produce about 1.5% more velocity, and this results in about 6-7% to more recoil. So in other words, that extra powder is resulting in diminishing returns in terms of velocity, but still producing more recoil. Now interestingly, Nosler also publishes a 280 Ackley load with a 140 grain bullet at 3,222 feet per second that slightly exceeds the velocity of that particular 7mm Remington Magnum load. However, since the 280 Ackley has such an efficiently designed case, that particular load only requires 60 grains of powder instead of 63 for the Remington Magnum. The 7mm Rim Mag load above still has about 3% more free recoil energy than that faster 280 Ackley improved load. That's not a gigantic difference, but it's also not nothing either. So does that mean the claim that the 280 Ackley improved can do everything the 7mm Remington Magnum can do but with less recoil is true? Well, sort of. It is true that certain factory loads and hand loads for the 280 Ackley can come very close and maybe even exceed the performance of typical 7mm Remington Magnum factory loads. It is also true that those 280 Ackley loads generally require a little less powder and thus produce a little less free recoil energy. All other things being the same, of course. However, it's also true that the 7mm Remington Magnum, especially when discussing really good hand loads, does have a higher ceiling on its performance than the 280 Ackley. So yes, it is easy to find examples of 280 Ackley improved loads that either match or exceed the performance of the 7mm Remington Magnum and still have less recoil. However, the 7mm Remington Magnum is still capable of slightly greater velocities overall. Barrel length is another thing you should keep in mind. With that reloading data, Nosler used a 24-inch barrel for the 270 Winchester and the 7mm Remington Magnum, but a 26-inch barrel for the 280 Remington and the 280 Ackley Improved in that published data I just referenced. Now this undoubtedly has an impact on bullet velocities. So remember, the gap in performance between many 280 Remington, 280 Ackley Improved, and 7mm Remington Magnum loads, especially the latter two, is pretty small. Indeed, depending on the exact barrel length of the rifles in question, the real-world advantage one cartridge may have over the other may narrow considerably, disappear, or maybe even flip in favor of the other one. Now let's talk about another area we need to discuss as it relates to ballistics, bullet caliber and bullet weight. 
The 270 uses .277 caliber bullets, while the 280 Remington, the 280 Ackley, and the 7mm Remington Magnum all use slightly larger .284 caliber bullets. Now, since they use larger diameter bullets, the 280, the 280 Ackley Improved, and the 7mm Magnum all have about 5% more frontal surface area than the 270 Winchester. All other things being equal, a bigger bullet will make a bigger hole, cause more tissue damage, and result in more blood loss. Once again, that's not a gigantic difference, but it is a slight advantage in favor of these 7mm cartridges. With regards to bullet weight, the majority of 270 factory loads shoot bullets in the 120 to 150 grain range. 130 grain and 150 grain bullets are by far the most common. On the other hand, the 280 Remington is normally offered with 139 grain, 140 grain, or 150 grain bullets, but it is possible to find a few loads with 156 grain, 160 grain, and 165 grain bullets as well. The 280 Ackley is similar with 140 grain, 150 grain, and 162 grain bullets being the most common, but it is also possible to find 165 grain and 168 grain bullets for it now as well in factory loads. Now, finally, the majority of 7mm Remington Magnum factory loads shoot bullets in the 139 to 175 grain range. Of these, 140 grain, 150 grain, 160 grain, and 175 grain bullets are the most common. Now, here's one last thing to consider when comparing these cartridges, magazine capacity. Now, since it uses a much larger case diameter, most rifle magazines will hold more 270, 280, and 280 Ackley cartridges than 7mm Remington Magnum cartridges. Typically, a rifle magazine that can hold 4 or 5 270 or 280 caliber cartridges will only be able to hold 3 7mm Remington Magnum cartridges. Alright, so where do we stand with each one? Shooting a smaller diameter and generally lighter bullets than the others, the 270 Winchester has a very flat, though not the flattest, trajectory and the least recoil of the bunch, but it also carries the least energy downrange and is the most uh, susceptible to wind deflection. Typical 280 Remington factory loads have a trajectory that's virtually identical to the 270. However, the cartridge shoots larger diameter bullets that are also generally heavier. Those bullets are more resistant to wind deflection and they retain more energy as they travel downrange. However, that comes at the expense of a little more recoil than the 270. The 280 Ackley Improved offers a modest ballistic improvement over the 280 Remington in terms of trajectory, wind resistance, and retained energy. Basically, it can hold a little bit more powder and it can thus shoot the same weight bullet a little bit faster. This comes at the expense of a little more recoil though. However, even though the cartridge closely approaches the overall performance of the 7mm Remington Magnum, the 280 Ackley still has somewhat less recoil than that cartridge since it requires less powder to achieve a similar level of performance. It also has the edge with magazine capacity and a hunter will probably be able to carry one, maybe two, depending on the rifle, more round in the magazine. Now finally, the 7mm Remington Magnum has the flattest trajectory, the most resistance to wind drift, and it retains the most energy at extended range. It's also better suited to using heavier bullets than the other cartridges. However, that comes at the expense of more recoil, and the larger diameter case of the cartridge results in a reduced magazine capacity in most rifles. Alright, now let's talk about ammunition selection. While all four are pretty commonly available, the 270 Winchester and the 7mm Remington Magnum are by far the most popular of the bunch. In fact, those two cartridges are likely in the top 10 or 15 best-selling rifle cartridges in the U.S. each year. Of those, the 270 Winchester is a little more commonly used than the 7mm Remington Magnum. Not surprisingly, just about every major ammunition manufacturer you can think of produces a wide variety of ammo for both the 270 and the 7mm Remington Magnum. The 280 Remington is somewhat less common, but it's still pretty easy to find with Barnes, Federal, Hornady, Nosler, Remington, and Winchester all producing good quality 280 Remington factory hunting ammo. The relatively new 280 Ackley is nowhere near as common as the others, and at this point, only Nosler, Federal, and Hornady make 280 Ackley improved factory ammo. That said, the cartridge really seems to be catching on, and I expect the ammo situation to continue to improve for the cartridge. Now, additionally, the, the 280 Ackley is a great choice for hand loaders, and it is now possible to buy 280 Ackley brass, and Nosler brass is especially good, but you can also make your own by fireforming 280 Remington brass. Now, additionally, it is possible to safely and often relatively accurately fire 280 Remington ammo in a 280 Ackley rifle. However, the brass is then fireformed to 280 Ackley after doing so, 
but that's yet another reason why it's a good idea to hand load if you like the 280 Ackley. Now fortunately, reloading components for all of these cartridges are also widely available. Now since the 280, the 280 Ackley, and the 7mm rim mag all use very popular .284 caliber bullets, there are lots and lots of really good quality hunting bullets of varying weights and sizes to choose from. Now likewise with the 270, uh, there's not a lot of other cartridges other than the 270 WSM, the 270 Weatherby, and the 6.8 Remington SPC that use .277 caliber bullets. However, the fact that the 270 Winchester itself is so darn popular means that there's also a decent amount of quality bullets to choose from for that cartridge as well. So regardless of which cartridge you choose of these four, you should have a really good bullet selection consisting of almost any major bullet style to choose from. All right, now let's talk about rifle selection. Now, the rifle situation is very similar to the ammunition situation with these cartridges. The 270 and the 7mm rim mag in that order are the most popular, followed by the 280 and the 280 Ackley. Uh, among others, the Browning X-Bolt, CZ550, Kimber Hunter, Mossberg Patriot, Nosler M48, Remington Model 700, the Ruger Hawkeye, the Tika T3, and the Winchester Model 70 are all available in both 270 and 7mm Remington Magnum. 280 Remington rifles are currently manufactured by Browning, Remington, and Winchester in their X-Bolt, Model 700, and Model 70 rifles. And finally, Nosler, Kimber, Montana, and Savage all produce rifles in 280 Ackley Improved. If you are interested in doing so, it is possible for a gunsmith to convert a 280 Remington rifle over to 280 Ackley Improved with a chamber reamer. Alright, so which one is right for you? Do you primarily hunt medium-sized game like deer, feral hogs, or black bear at ranges inside of 200 yards? All four are wonderfully suited for hunting game like that. There's very little difference between them ballistically inside of 200 yards. Go with the 270 if you want the cheapest or easiest to find factory ammo, or if you just want a little bit lighter recoiling cartridge. Now, are you looking for a great cartridge for hunting game like pronghorn or deer in open country where you might need to take a shot at several hundred yards? Again, they all work really well in this role as well, and the differences between them are still pretty small. With typical factory hunting loads, the 7mm Magnum and the 280 Ackley do have a slight advantage over the others in this regard with a flatter trajectory and the most resistance to wind drift. Of those two, the 280 Ackley does have a little less recoil, but ammo is easier to find for the 7mm Mag. Now, are you sensitive to recoil? The 270 Winchester does have by far the least recoil of the bunch. The 280 Remington and the 280 Ackley, especially the Ackley Improved cartridge, are both really good alternatives uh, for hunters who want a little bit more powerful cartridge than the 270, but with less recoil than cartridges like the 7mm Remington Magnum or the 300 Win Mag. Now, are you looking for a great cartridge for sheep or mountain goat hunting, where you need a powerful cartridge with manageable recoil and a lightweight and easy to carry rifle? All will certainly work to one degree or another. Thanks to Jack O'Connor, the 270 Winchester is considered a classic sheep hunting cartridge if there ever was one. However, the larger 284 caliber cartridge do have a little bit more resistance to wind drift in either a similar, in the case of the 280 Remington, or a flatter trajectory. Now this is an area where the 280 Ackley really shines because it has a similar or slightly superior trajectory and resistance to wind drift, depending on the exact load of course, when compared to the 7mm Remington Magnum, but with less recoil and a lightweight mountain rifle that's easy to carry in rough country. And of course there's not a darn thing wrong with using the 7mm Remington Magnum in this role either, but that is the advantage of the 280 Ackley, especially in this particular case. Now are you a hand loader? Now, if not, you should probably stay away from the 280 Ackley unless you're fine with just a couple brands as factory ammo options and go with either the 270 or the 7mm Magnum. Now, if you are a hand loader, both the 280 Remington and especially the 280 Ackley do have outstanding potential. Now, that being said, all four are really good options for reloaders. Now, do you want a cartridge that is really well suited for hunting bigger game like elk, moose, stag, kudu, or something like that? Now, in addition to being excellent choices for deer size game, these cartridges are also suitable for bigger creatures under the right circumstances. Many consider the 270 to be on the light side for elk and moose, but especially when using heavy premium quality bullets like the Nosler Partition, the 270 is absolutely capable of getting the job done. Now, that being said, the 280 Remington, 280 Ackley Improved, and the 7mm Remington Magnum are generally better suited for hunting bigger game. 
Now this is another area where the 7mm Remington Magnum and especially the 280 Ackley really shine because they're very flexible cartridges that will work really well on a wide variety of hunting situations. So for instance, both the 280 Ackley and the 7mm Magnum are great options for a hunter who just wanted to purchase one rifle for hunting North American game, like a deer, pronghorn antelope, bear, hogs, elk, and even moose. In particular, this is why the 280 Ackley really appeals to so many hunters, like my friend Joseph Von Benedict, because it delivers performance almost identical to the 7mm Rim Mag, but with a little less recoil, and most rifles will fit an additional cartridge or two in the magazine. Now, it might seem like I'm splitting hairs here when talking about the strengths and weaknesses of these cartridges. That's absolutely true. Now, while they each offer different advantages, all of these cartridges are very accurate, pretty flat shooting, and they are well suited for use on a variety of game out to several hundred yards. For the vast majority of hunters, there's very little difference in their performance at typical hunting ranges. Now, all four of them are excellent rifle cartridges, and while there is a certain amount of overlap in their capabilities, each one does offer certain advantages, and you need to carefully analyze your potential needs and choose the one that you think fits them the best. Even so, no animal will ever know the difference if your shot is placed in the right spot. Get a good hunting rifle chambered in the cartridge you think fits your needs the best, learn to shoot it well, use quality bullets, and you will be all set for most hunting situations. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click that red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any of my new videos on hunting gear reviews, cartridge comparisons, and more. For more detailed information on popular hunting cartridges and what they're best suited for, click on the link in the description below or go to Hunting Guns 101 to get a free ebook I have written on the best hunting calibers. Now I'm going to turn it over to you. What cartridge do you prefer? The 270, the 280, the 280 Ackley Improved, or the 7mm Remington Magnum? What game have you successfully taken with them and which ammo do you like to use? Let me know by leaving a comment on this video right now. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and good hunting.